Hey, it's Joe Glines. In this video, we're going to walk through troubleshooting some of the issues you have around web scraping when you're trying to, let's say, populate an edit field on a web page or click a drop down or set a value. And, you know, it, it for whatever reason doesn't register. And um, a good example here, just to visualize what I'm talking about here, this is a, a regex tool, online word regex tool. And if I start typing here, notice down below, it starts highlighting what what it is it's in here right and so if i add commas it highlights all the commas it's dynamically um checking what i'm typing here and updating down below right and if you haven't learned about regexes um check out the webinar and also training videos i have on them because they're pretty amazing but that's not the point of this video um so let me get back in here and say if i type practice i'll just type prac right so notice oops that is um it's getting highlighted well, if I'm in web scraping, if I, I have a simple script right here, and I'm basically, I'm going to connect to this web page. I'm going to set, I already checked with my IWB2 learner tool that this right here is the reg ID, um, regex is the ID. So I'm going to get elements by ID, put it in here. I'm going to set that value, and that's because this value it says value here. I'm going to set it to PR, actually, let's change it since that's already highlighted. So practice, and we'll make that perfect. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, now, when I reload this, you're going to notice there's something. See how this is yellow here, and this says PRAC, PRAC? Well, when I run it, so notice it updated it up here, yet this didn't follow, right? Um, and that was really perplexing to me at the beginning, and, and thankfully Jackie helped me out um, in uh, understanding what's going on here. And so basically there's an event listener built on this element that's looking for certain events. And so events... Um, is a nebulous kind of topic. There, there's just there's different events. There's hundreds of different types of events that can happen on a web page, and it used to be where um, a web page would use like looking for a click or an on click or on change. Right, those would all trigger the activity. But when I reload this and and let me come in here, so I'll we'll change it back to that. Notice it's working, and I rerun it. Um, so notice it gets up here, it did it, but it still didn't update. It, even though I put the fire event on click on change, right? Um, those no longer work reliably, unfortunately, because they were very simple. Um, now you got to do this. You got to dispatch an event and it has to be the right event on that element. And so the easiest way so far I found now it's not foolproof because it doesn't, it only shows a certain kind of event, um, but it, well, I shouldn't say kind, but they have to be built in a certain way. But this visually bent bookmarklet, you can, uh, you, it's just, it injects some JavaScript. So basically you make a bookmark on your, on your, um, browser tool. And when you click it, it's going to show you in a visual way, which is nice. The, um, what is like this one down here? See, this has a click event. So there is an event listener looking for click on this element. If I come up here, you can see there are three events it's looking for. It's looking for change, for key up and mouse up. <laughs> And um, so these are these are apparently jQuery. I'm looking at that right here. It does give you a little information. I don't really look at, at this stuff because for me, it, it really isn't needed. The only thing we need to know is like, oh, you know what? This element is listening for three different types of events. And I don't necessarily know which one I want to trigger. Um, it's just I got to trigger one of them. Um, and you probably could go look in the developer tools and track down the actual thing and follow it through. But um, let's actually, let's, let's switch over so... Oh, and, and by the way, if there's too many of these things on the page, you can click this and that will just remove it. Um, and see, there's other clicks here, click here, click. Um, but you can, you can, um, like on this one, I could hit remove and it'll, it'll allow me to see what else is behind it. But, um, this is saying there's a change key up the mouse up. Let's, let's switch over real quickly in, uh, into Chrome. Cause I want to give you another way. Now Chrome, there's actually, um, they have an extension with that same tool. So on this web page, it works fine. You can see there's a change mouse up and key up and down here, there's a click more things over here. Um, however, let me get out of visual event. You can also hit the escape key, but if I'm going to, I'm going to inspect here and that's going to bring up the developer tools in Chrome. And what's cool is in Chrome, when you're, when you're here, see this tab event listeners. Now notice this list was a lot longer than the other one was right. So my belief is these are all the events being listened to on this entire page It's not specific to this element. And so that's why I also don't encourage you to use this approach. You can get see a little more information about it. But again, these are, um, these, I believe are the, 
uh, parameters that get initialized to the event, but um, we don't really need to know that stuff. There's another way to to set a, a breakpoint and do a lot of convoluted stuff, but it, honestly, it just it was really confusing, and so I'm not going to go into explaining that. Um, just because it, it was more complex than I wanted to be. The other thing I'll say is this visual event tool. Um, if we go to like this other regex tool, um, it's a good example where this has event listeners also on it also because I've tested it. However, when I do the event listener tool, it's going to... It's more dramatic when it actually does something. So down here saying visual events, it's building it, but it said it found zero events, right? And so it, it's not 100% trustworthy, but from my experience, this has been the only page where it didn't show. Um, and so I'm going to inspect it here. And now again, we can say event listeners. Oh, look, look at all these events on the page, right? I think they're just built in a different way, but th this would also be like, holy cow, that's a lot of events. How do I track down which one I want to do? Um, so... The first thought is, is one is, you know, think about what you're doing, what you're, when you're manually triggering it, I'm in here, let me turn off, I'll hit escape this time, there we go, and I, I hit a key, I'm hitting my keys up and down, right, and so that's what, oh, you know, when I, and actually, here's another great way is, when I start typing, you don't see anything, uh, you know what, let me, um, if I hold E, uh, it's going to keep repeating it, I, how do I do, that? all right, so let me, let me do this, I'm going to update this to have a lot of E's, Okay. And now when I'm holding down E, another thing is updating and then it updates, right? It's when I let go of the key. So that to me was like, Hey, it's that key up this key up, right? Is mine. It's also looking for mouse up. And so if I click in, when I click, when I click in it, it won't up, uh, turn this off. Okay. When I click in it, it won't update, but when I release, that's when this would get updated. So let me see if I can prove that out here, but I'm going to, it's gonna yeah it's not gonna work because of course it um the key i hit delete i guess i could cut it but anyway when it's a mouse up mouse down so you got to figure out what what key what events are being triggered on that element um, once you do that now let me show you how how you go about fixing this oh so you know let me refresh this page and then um we're gonna we're gonna skip this part now. That was the man trying to trigger it the old way, and so I still have my pointer um, here. I I still have the same um, that I'm gonna set this to PRAC in the value, um, and this can be done pretty much anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's before or after you, you do the other stuff about the event. But all right, now with an event, what you got to do is first you got to create an object to the event you want. So I'm gonna do a keyboard event, and in this case, I'm gonna do a key up event. Um, and this, so this was, I had, uh, typed this from before. Um, so anyway, so this will be a keyboard event and I'm going to store it in this keyboard up object, right? And then the very next thing you, well, I'm sorry, you don't have to do it next, but after you create the event, at some point you need to initialize it. And these initializing parameters differ by event. And so this is why I'm not going to get into this video, but this is why I've, I've incorporated all of this into my auto hotkey syntax writer, because there was just a lot to remember. And, and I was, I was too lazy to keep coming back to this and um, trying to go look it up or have a hot string for it, depending on which type it was. So um, I'll show you in the next video, the, the new stuff in my auto hotkey syntax writer but let's keep pressing on with how to use it. So after you create the event and you initialize it, then much like up here where we, after we said we're going to set the value and then we say either click or we're going to fire the event, right? We got a dispatch. It's called dispatch the event. And, um, and then you put in the object you've created. So see when I'm here, it's highlighted over those. Now, when I save this and reload it and run it, Notice it, it up this yellow updated, right? And so if I went back again and said, TICE, save, reload, run, it's updating this. And that's because it's triggering. I created an event and then I dispatched it to this element to tell the web page, hey, you know what? This is updated. Go do something else, right? And so, of course, you never know necessarily what the other thing else is. But um, that's the quick intro. There are a lot of different um, events. And so I went through, by the way, also and said, hey, um, I, I hit a little bit over 50 pages and I just kind of monitored to say how many, you know, what events are there and what frequency. 
Um, and the other thing I did though was, you know, on a given page, let me actually navigate to it here. Like, uh, cause if I remember correctly, um, YouTube, what was built this way, which isn't surprising, um, is when you, when you look at it, you know, for each of these things, it had a, a load event, right? So this one was a little differently. Or if we go to the, uh, what was it? The, I think the, um, oh yeah, documentation page. So here, I also noticed, and it's taking a second to load, um, that, that these were all like virtually the same, right? They would all be click events um, or mouse over events or something. And so what I did was I didn't want to have the um, number of items. So see all of these things, these, these are all um, have a click or double click or mouse over right? Each one of these. And so I didn't want to keep counting them depending on how many elements I had on a page um, and, and totally blow it away. So anytime there was, it looked like to have 10 or more, I capped it at 10. And that's, that's not just for the click event. That was for all of these, right? But my point being often there were even more than 10. So this click event, um, because it, it just had, you know, it was already much more prevalent than the other events. However, it's probably even, this is probably underrepresenting. So the very first thing I would do is if you are having an issue with um, a web page not updating is try the click event and, and maybe not even look at what other events is it doing, unless you're just, of course, trying to learn, right? But um, that click event was very, very prevalent. And so that would be the first my go-to. Um, and I didn't demonstrate it here, but it's, it'll be in my syntax writer. It's the same thing. You basically, you, you will create a... Um, you know, I might have an example. Here's another keyboard event, keyboard event, keyboard event. Okay. Apparently I don't have it in this. Um, I thought I had one in this file, but you, you still, you're going to initialize. Oh, oh, that was the dummy one. Um, you're going to initialize it and then I'm sorry, you're going to create the object and then you initialize it. And then you just make sure you pass, you dispatch it on that same element that you're working on. So um, that's it for now. In the next video, I'm going to walk through demonstrating using my syntax writer and how to adapt your code because it is a little more complex, uh, but it shouldn't be too hard for you. Thank you.